A few months ago, I made a video telling you that I felt stuck. And I was stuck. Stuck at a number between zero and one, and no amount of listening to Zay Frank metaphors was going to make it any better. From the title of this video, anyone who knows me, even a little bit, thinks this video is going to be about the wombats. But it's not. Nope. In October of last year, I started to think about going to Norway to see a band called Sin. This video isn't about them either, by the way. It was Sin's first show ever, and I'd spent the few months prior to that October falling in love with their album. Concert tickets were expensive, plane tickets were expensive, everything was expensive. I chose to leave it to a thing I don't believe in to decide for me. Yes, fate was going to decide whether or not I was going to go to Norway. So I emailed Torg from Sin, but most notably the Wombats, and I asked him if he could get me on the guest list for the Sin show. I woke up the next morning to a message from Torg saying that if I was going to go all the way to Norway, then of course he'd put me on the guest list. So that's it. Fate decided. I was off to Norway. Sin was the opening act for a band called Team Me. Team Me was a band that I'd heard of but knew very little about. I started listening to them shortly after finding out about the show, but I didn't find out much about anyone in Team Me, apart from Marius, who is also in Sin. Elena and Caitlin, my two friends from Sacramento, were the only people I knew who'd seen Team Me live. They told me on multiple occasions that Team Me concerts were life-changing experiences and that that Team Me concert would change my life. The weird part of this story is that as great as it was, we're gonna totally skip the concert and move on to the events that happened later. I was invited to the pub by both Tord and Marius, but what I didn't realize due to my limited Norwegian was that I was invited to two different pubs. So after a while, I found Café Sarah on Torkskept, and I found Marius, but then he had to go. So I was just kind of in this pub, believing that Tord would show up soon and eventually Marius would come back. I believed wrong. Finally, defeated, I decided to have one last look around. Again, I need to state that I didn't really know what any of the members of Team Me looked like, but I had just seen them perform and I was pretty sure that I found one of them in the pub. I had two options here. I could give up and go home, or I could go ask this guy if he was in Team Me. So being me, I took the risk. I figured it could go one of two ways. He could yell at me in Norwegian and throw his drink in my face, or he could actually be someone from Team Me and that might lead me to the right pub. That was a risk I was willing to take. So I walked up to his table. I thought I would keep it simple so I didn't totally embarrass myself. Instead of asking him if he was in Team Me, leading to an embarrassment in either direction, I went simply with, hi, do you know where Tord is? Oh yeah, he's at Cafe Some Norwegian Thing. In case you don't have a detailed knowledge of Team Me, they have a very specific style and this is what they look like. Uh, where? Cafe Some Norwegian Thing. Uh, do you know where that is? It's just down the street. I was actually thinking of going there soon. Could you take me with you? Sure, can you wait this long? I thought, you know, yeah, I can wait 10 minutes. It was more like an hour and a half, but this turned out to be one of the best decisions of my life. I joined who I soon found out was Seaman Shikulski, the bassist of Team Me, at his table. Most conversations between me and new people from foreign countries usually start out something like, you came all the way from Canada for this. And I did. I came all the way from Canada. During the course of that night, Seaman said something to me that really rang true. And I don't know if it was actually true or if it was the number of beers Seaman and I were in, but I don't think it really matters. He said, I want to do what you do. And at that point I thought, here's a very smart and capable 20-something who's in an amazing and successful band. He has a Norwegian Grammy for crying out loud. And he wants to do what I do? I didn't really understand it until much later when I thought about it more. I, caution to the wind, went to Norway. A country that until a few years ago I had barely even heard of. And I didn't even speak a lick of Norwegian. Just to do it. That's pretty amazing. So from there I started to open up to Seaman, telling him all of my hopes and dreams like you do to a stranger in a pub. For years I thought that I wanted to work in the film industry. And I was there. But like I said, I felt stuck. And while following the Wombats, it became clearer and clearer to me that what I was actually interested in was touring. I had this little caterpillar in my stomach that said, you need to be a tour manager. And just like when Seaman told me that he wanted to do what I do, and I told him to be brave and risk it and go to America and make mistakes and get lost and just do it, he told me the same thing about becoming a tour manager. My advice had mirrored itself back to me. So I got home to Canada and I didn't really realize it, but my little tour managing caterpillar had started making himself into a butterfly. I had had this amazing experience, but I was back to normal. Stuck. Or so I thought. A few months later I started doing research. My caterpillar had turned into a hungry butterfly, and he would not be satisfied by merely the scent of the flowers. I found myself dying to be a tour manager. Eventually, and right at the last minute, I applied to the Arts and Entertainment management program at Capilano University. Listen, I go to foreign countries all the time where I don't speak the language or know the culture, 
But that was literally the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. I got accepted to the program and it starts today. I'm on my way. I have a direction now and it's all thanks to a series of random events that led me to Seaman Shikulski that night. And because of that, I'm no longer stuck. So when someone tells you something as simple as a concert will change your life, you should believe them because it might be true. And that's worth the risk, I think.